Welcome to Dateline Schools, a presentation of the St. Clair County Regional Educational Service Agency with your host, Terry Harrington. Welcome to Dateline Schools. On this edition of Dateline Schools, we're going to take a look at a different type of competition for our local high school students. It's called Mock Trial. And to help explain what Mock Trial is all about, my guests include St. Clair County District Judge Cynthia Platzer, as well as local attorney John Livesey, and members of the Memphis High School Mock Trial team. Before we start, though, let's listen in on this education update. Thank you, Terry. A student at Tech's Academy of Style will be inspiring hairdressers across the country when a photo of a hairstyle she created is featured in one of the beauty trade's most prominent books. Danielle Crone, a senior from Port Huron Northern High School, had her style selected for publication in the Inspire Hair Fashion for Salon Clients book. The book features the latest trends in cuts and styles and is a staple in salons throughout the U.S. The Academy of Styles director, Joyce Livesey, said being published is a great honor in the cosmetology business. Students at Woodland Developmental School recently took part in the first ever Woodland Science Fair. Nearly every classroom conducted an experiment. Students created their projects using the scientific method, which they learned in class prior to the fair. Projects included estimating the number of seeds in a green bean, making a volcano, and experimenting with the flotation of soda cans. Each scientist got an award of excellence. Students celebrated their success with a science fair dance the following night. Woodland families and friends were invited so they could see what their student scientists had accomplished. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, which recently proposed a major nutritional overhaul of student meals, might want to look at tech for some pointers. Tech's catering department has already implemented some big changes in nutrition and expects to add more years before the government's plan would go into effect. Since the fall, the department has offered bread products that are exclusively whole grain. Catering manager Sue Nagowski said her department has been working to meet mandates of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge. She said when the 2011-2012 school year begins, the department will also offer whole grain pasta. Parents got their turn to learn when they participated in a parent university recently at RISA. Parents and caregivers of children 0 to 18 took sessions ranging from anger management to parent-child communication and attention deficit disorder to getting kids to eat healthier. Parents also attended keynote speeches given by the former executive director of the Autism Society of Michigan and the facilitator of a national workshop for parents. RISA provided funding for Parent University along with Early On and several other local support agencies. And finally, remember that March is Reading Month, a time when parents are encouraged to read with their children and get them to spend more time reading on their own. Several reading activities are planned throughout the county schools as well as the community. Local libraries also have special events during the month. That's it for this edition of Education Update. I'm Ann Frederick. Terry Harrington and Dateline Schools will return in a moment. Welcome to St. Clair County, a great place to live, work, and visit. Our firefighters, law enforcement officers, and paramedics are highly trained and pride themselves in responding to assist you in a matter of minutes. However, in a large-scale event, emergency responders may not be able to assist everyone in the first few minutes, hours, or even days. Would you be ready if your power was out for several days? A storm confined you to your home for an extended period of time if authorities requested you evacuate immediately. The Be Ready for 72 Hours program allows you to take charge before an emergency to assure your family and neighbors remain safe. Simple steps like having a plan and emergency supply kit can make the difference between being in harm's way or being safe and secure. Don't wait until it's too late to prepare. Be ready now, St. Clair County. Hi, my name is Joe Staley. I'm a graduate of Central Michigan University and currently an offensive lineman for the San Francisco 49ers. Also, I love reading. My mother is a school librarian here in Michigan, and research indicates that students in schools with certified school librarians have higher test scores. When I attended college, I understood the importance of knowing how to research using the internet as well as a library, and school librarians taught me that. Does your student school have a certified school librarian? If not, ask why. Welcome back to Dateline Schools. On this segment of Dateline Schools, we're taking a look at a competitive program for our local high school students called Mock Trial. 
And joining me on this segment are the two people that are really instrumental in bringing this program to St. Clair County, Judge Cynthia Platzer and also local attorney John Livesey. And welcome to the program. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Ju Judge, what is mock trial and, and what are you hoping to accomplish by making this competition available to our students? Mock trial is um, a real life setting where we have in one day students from all of the high schools across our county compete with each other in a courtroom setting to um, demonstrate their skills before um, judges who are scoring them but who are acting as a jury. So these students are coached up to the point of the competition then during the competition there's no coaching mm -hmm. so these students are on their own they can caucus with their other team members but they're on their own to act as a team to present their case before a jury. And they learn, the reason we did this is so that they can have fun while they're learning. And what they're learning is all sorts of neat things like thinking on their feet, like listening mm -hmm. when you ask the, your witness the question and you need to bring your case out through that witness did you listen to what your witness said? Even more critical, on cross-examination of the other side's witness, did you listen to the answer? So listening is critical and students learn to listen. They learn to develop a case and to persuade the jury. They learn to critically think about both sides of every issue, not just the factual scenario given, but every fact within that case. And then to pick out which cases, which facts within that case are important for the presentation of their case, of their theory, and then present that amongst the team members in their respective duties to the judges. So I imagine it gets pretty competitive in that courtroom, doesn't it? The, the awesome thing about this is it is very competitive, yet it's very respectful. Mm -hmm. It's a true courtroom setting. So these kids come dressed for the part, suit and tie. They um, act as attorney. They're respectful of each other's brain power and each other's positions. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Great. John, I know you were one of the individuals who introduced mock trial to St. Clair County. Tell us how, how we ended up getting this program started six years ago. Well, before I came to uh, St. Clair County, uh, the county that I had been, we had uh, a school that uh, mock trial that had done very well, and I was always interested in getting it, but no place here uh, had mock trial. I judged both at the regional and at the state competition seven years ago, and after one day after court, I was talking with Judge Platzer about it, and I was telling her about the case, and I could see that she was interested, and I uh, said, would you like to read the case? So I gave it to her, and she was mm -hmm. definitely very interested, and uh, it all proceeded from there. The, the brainchild of having the local competition uh, was Judge Platzer's, and we started meeting with people from the uh, schools over the next year to set it up for the, for the following year, and that was the first... Uh, competition six years ago and this is the this is the sixth uh, annual competition. Now I'm sure it started out a little slowly not every school participated. How many participated that first year do you remember? I think there was about eight or ten I'm not sure it's grown mm -hmm. uh, and we have some limitations because we only have so many courtrooms. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, now do all the judges participate in, in St. Clair County? Um, or most of them at least? Most of them mm -hmm. have uh, uh, and the, the bar has uh, uh, been great in uh, participating because they sit as the, as the scoring judges. And, and this year, uh, Judge Platzer introduced a, uh, a new element of having uh, one citizen juror uh, as one of the scoring judges in, uh, uh, in the various courtrooms. And, and that was an interesting addition. Cindy, how did, how did that work with the, uh, the citizen judge as part of it? Um, this was, we do a wrap-up every mm -hmm. year, and at the end of last year at our wrap-up, that suggestion was made, actually by Mike Wendling. And I posed that to the Bar Association, and they said, sure, one layperson on each panel of judges. 
So we went out and just simply asked, is anybody interested? And there was only one person that I talked to that said that they couldn't, and that was for a personal reason. Um, these judges gave to our competition a, a, a different perspective mm -hmm. because they're not honed in on the specific legalities. <laughs> they're actually jurors who are weighing what they know about common sense approach to things as opposed to you didn't ask this question and it was critical to your case. A lay person doesn't analyze it that way. The lay person's brought to it just a nice common <laughs> sense approach and they were wonderful and then some really good ideas came from that which I'll take up in our next wrap up. Okay, good. Now, talk a little bit about the judging. What, what's the criteria that uh, the judges are looking for? I mean, it's not proven guilty or innocence or anything like that, is it? No, it isn't. As a matter of fact, the judges are never allowed to actually determine the merits of the case, okay. guilt or innocence, mm -hmm. if it's a criminal case or an award of money damages on a civil case. They never get to that point. As a matter of fact, the rules forbid that. But there are guidelines for performance rating and they are set by the state organization, a range from one to ten. One would be the person's not maintaining very good eye contact, is, is unsure of him or herself, and this could be for the attorney presenting the case or it could be for the witness because there are three witnesses, three student witnesses, and then three student attorneys making up the team. So it could be that the, the team didn't work well together um, the student was unfamiliar with how to handle objections. Um, going from that as a one or maybe a two all the way down to a ten, and a ten is an outstanding performance where that student basically took the papers, set them aside, and went to that jury and just <laughs> gave that most commanding closing you've ever seen without one bit of notes, without one opportunity to do anything except recapsulize everything that that team has presented. And where that attorney nails it, mm -hmm. so to say, by incorporating everything that team built upon in their direct and cross-examination, that's going to be an outstanding performance. That's probably going to be a 10. Great. Now, obviously, they don't learn all of this just on their own, so who helps coach these kids? Well, we have a wonderful mentoring system, and it really is mentoring when our members of the Bar Association team up with teacher coaches. And I will tell you, the key to a successful team is not the lawyer. It <laughs> is the teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're lawyers. We don't teach worth a darn. <laughs> teachers know how to communicate with kids. So it is so critical to have a teacher coach who is engaged. And if you have an engaged teacher coach, you're going to do very well. Your team will do well. The lawyers hopefully meet, but it's as much as the teacher coach will allow because mm -hmm. it's really up to that teacher coach to get the students in a mindset to practice one night a week, two nights a week. I know of one team that practices a half an hour once a week during the school session. That's not going to work. That team's not going to be successful. What we're looking for is the mentoring that occurs between the attorney to allow students to express themselves, but with a little coaching. Mm -hmm. John, I know you're, you're one of the uh, attorney coaches up at Portier Northern. H how is it selected who goes to which school? As, as to the attorneys, uh, what attorney goes to that, it's kind of a, a self-selection process because okay. uh, uh, I've been involved uh, at the junior high level with uh, kids that go to Northern uh, and I live on that end. It was a, a natural progression <laughs> uh, and actually this year I had uh, one kid uh, on my team had played football for me when, I was, uh, when he was in the eighth grade. And, uh, and that, that's where I, I started out, and of course, uh, once you go there, the, if, if they like you, they want you to come back, and, sure. uh, uh, and I've gone back there, uh, there every year. Good. And, the, and she is absolutely right. The teacher uh, makes all the difference. I can imagine. Now, we've had uh, our local competition at the end of February. Correct. Is there any 
follow-up competition that the students can go on and compete? There is. Uh, in a uh, week from next Saturday, uh, the those who wish to compete, because anybody can compete at the regional level, okay. uh, which is uh, will be at the courthouse uh, in, uh, in Pontiac at the Oakland County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and some teams, uh, that maybe they had two teams in the local competition, uh, only one will go uh, to the uh, regional, and, and that's going to be the case with Northern, because these kids are involved in a lot of other things. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. we're losing a bunch of our kids to band ah, because okay. band competition is the same day mm -hmm. so actually we're going to be reshuffling our teams for the for the regional and then from the regional you can go on to state and, and even national the top seven teams mm -hmm. uh, go to com compete in Lansing uh, for the state finals the winner of the state finals you know, it goes to uh, national and there will be a, a national champion Good. so have we had anybody go that far yet we have not, but we're still working on it. That's okay. We're still a young program, right? We are. We so are. mock trial always happens in February, right? The, usually the okay, last, but it could be the second to the last Saturday okay. in February. Okay. So something to look forward in 2012 for the local mock trial tra uh, championships here. Maybe go out and sit in court and see the difference, right? You will be blown away by okay. what kids do. Great. Well, it's time for us to take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet members of the Memphis High School mock trial team, so don't go away. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Yeah, I'll do it. Me too. Sign me Take up. on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Thanks. You believe this guy? Trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Dateline Schools. We're still talking about Mock Trial as the sixth annual local tournament is held at the end of February. So joining me now on the set from Memphis High School is the Memphis Mock Trial teacher, Cheryl Lever, along with student participant Stephen Brickle and Samantha Jackson, and also the coach for Memphis uh, from the St. Clair County Bar Association and our county prosecutor, Mike Wenland. So welcome to the program. Thank you. So how did the how did the mock trial go for your team this year, Cheryl? Oh, they did a fabulous job. I was just bursting with pride because they did such a great job. But I have a lot of veterans this year. I've got five students who this is their fourth year wow. doing mock trial. So they were helping the team a lot and they I think they're ready to just skip law school and jump right in <laughs> because they're go. fabulous. Yeah. So. so so what is your role as the the teacher coach uh, for the Memphis team? I just do a lot of the organization and I have the meetings in my room after school. So a lot of it, as far as I do, is the administrative part and the connection with the lawyers and with the tournament um, supervisors for the Pontiac tournament and with Judge Platzer. But we meet in my room several times a week and we'll have meetings and just kind of there to supervise. So you're but the, you're these the guys cheerleader can, and it's... I don't know about Obviously that, but yes. Obviously, uniform coordinator, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes so. so. Good. So, now uh, you've been the initial uh, mock trial to coach at Memphis, haven't you, for six years now? Yeah, and actually we started seven years ago. Judge oh. Platzer started getting it organized. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and so this was my sixth year with the tournament. So How much changed over the years for you? Just a whole lot of improvement. And the more we go along, the more we learn, and the better they get. So it's... Do you find that with the students participating in the mock trial that this is some real good life lessons for them, not oh. just in being in front of people, but the whole preparation? And Absolutely. The stuff they learn is just, and the stuff I learn is just phenomenal as far as getting along. But the critical thinking skills, mm -hmm. I think they probably sometimes sit in class and are ready to object to things because <laughs> that's the way they think now. So 
yeah, what they learn is just invaluable. Great. Mike, as the uh, county prosecutor and also um, part of the Bar Association that sponsors the tournament, what is your role and does every team have someone like yourself participating on that team? Most of the teams have an attorney coach. I think all of them do. Um, myself and Steve Gilliatt, who's the chief assistant in our office, we split Memphis and we give technical advice on rules of evidence. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, we talk Cheryl off the ledge when students have you know, conflicting extracurricular activities and things. Um, as you can imagine, the students that are involved in mock trial are also involved in a lot of other activities, um, whether it be honor society or volleyball or other sports that intersect and that the scheduling becomes a challenge. But um, we more or less just are around to you know, tell students whether they are, they're in line with the Michigan rules of evidence or not. Wow, that's got to be kind of tough. I mean, kids haven't had any law practice or any law classes and everything, and yet they're trying to follow yeah. the, the procedures, isn't it? They're, they're just exceptional students. They do a great job of catching on to the rules of evidence. I think they might have taught uh, some of the judges uh, at the competition <laughs> some of those rules and helped highlight some of that. And, and they come down um, during the season to my office, and we have pizza in my office at lunchtime, and they observe an actual criminal trial that's going on. And, and they get some exposure to um, real in-court work. And by the time they do the mock trial competition, it looks a lot like real in-court work. Mm -hmm. Has anything surprised you uh, amongst uh, the Memphis students and, and the other teams that uh, compete against Memphis? Um, just the, the level of expertise and technical knowledge of what it is to be a lawyer, um, how much they pick up over the year. And, and Steve and Sam have been with us four years, um, and, then, and we're there at the beginning and how much they've progressed as aspiring attorneys from I think the beginning when Steve did it all <laughs> yeah. last minute yeah. and, <laughs> and to see him a weeks ago in front of the class really pushing the younger students to be prepared and be ready and how important it was to have things in line before they got before the court. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an exceptional process. That's great. Well, explain a little bit for us too what, what the case was this year. Case this year Wow, it was like three days ago and I've already forgotten. Yeah. It was about cyber stalking. Um, and okay. every year it's a different case. Mm -hmm. some, some years it's a criminal case, some years it's a civil case. This year was about two students in a um, cyber stalking case where one had sent some inappropriate text or inappropriate email messages to a different student who were competing for the same academic scholarship within the high school and th mm -hmm. they were both okay. participants. Mm -hmm. And um, what emotional and physical distress it caused the student to receive the messages and what their uh, monetary damages would be um, through their loss of their future, really. And it was an interesting fact scenario, and the fact scenarios are always very um, in line with sort of what's going on in, in amongst high school students at that time. We've had a texting while driving case. We've had a murder case. Um, we've had a lot of interesting um, fact scenarios. Great. Samantha, what was your role in mock trial this year? Um, I had two roles. I was a defense lawyer and also a witness. I played Dr. Marty Robertson. Okay, so explain just a little bit about what your role was uh, as a defense. Uh, well, for defense, I'm defending the client that's being sued, and I gave a closing statement. I also directed the plaintiff and cross. Or I directed the defendant and cross the plaintiff. So I had to kind of work with everybody as a defense lawyer. You, you have to know the case very thoroughly as well as the rules. Now, do you write your own closing statements and your own arguments and that? Yes, definitely. And actually, the closing, you can't really prepare. You can have an outline, but you have to work in facts when you're actually there. So it's, it's almost like impromptu. Okay. Stephen, how about your role this year? Uh, well, I directed um, Pat Clifford. I'm sorry, Chris Hopp. And then I also gave a direct of Taylor Williams, which was the defendant in this case, while also being Pat Clifford as a witness. Oh, okay. What yeah. part did you like best? Probably being a lawyer because it's fun when you got, you know, your witness and you know that you can get them on the cross and there's nothing that they can really do. <laughs> what, what have you found that you've learned the most by participating in mock trial? I've learned that you can't always get your way or even if you know you think that a ruling should go one way, um, the judge is always right, so you kind of have to adapt mm -hmm. to um, what they're saying. It's not, it's not exactly what you think it should be. Mm -hmm. Samantha, how about you? What did you feel is uh, the most important thing that you've learned as a participant? Um, I agree. Learning how to adapt and kind of make the best out of a situation because there's a lot of things you just can't anticipate in my trial, so you really have to be mm -hmm. adaptable and think on your feet. So that, that was a huge lesson to learn. <laughs> Good. Now you've been with mock trial for four years, right? Yes. 
any yeah. much change over the years and did, did you kind of feel a progression as you became oh, a senior from your freshman year uh the <laughs> biggest thing would probably be confidence because it's a really intimidating environment being by all these lawyers and judges in a real yeah. courtroom you're playing against students you've never met it's really intimidating but once you have confidence it's so much more fun and it comes more naturally now I was going to say, and you're, and you're sitting next to the uh, top attorney right. in St. Clair yeah. County here, so I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's good. How, how much did you learn from Mike and, and the other coaches that you've had? Oh, so much. They are so cool because they can just look at something and come up with the best questioning ever. Like, it just comes so easily to them, and the way they word things is really cool. Stephen, when, when you guys got your packet that showed what the uh, scenario is going to be mm -hmm. this year, what kind of information do they provide, and, and then how much do you have to go and research and, and do on your own? Well, first off, what you know, I think I did was read through the case, see what it's even about, and then you go back and you see the rules because they give you all the rules. But then, like every other thing, I mean, there's comes with mistakes, so then you know you get edited things, so you have to kind of um, rework some of your things. But you just go in there, you look at it, and you kind of you know take it from there, I guess. Now, when you say mistakes, how do you know what's a mistake and what isn't a mistake? Um, conflicting stories, you know, like this year is uh, someone said that it was 15 milligrams of a drug, but it was 10 and somewhere else, so they just just little things like that. Okay, and and you're picked up, be able to pick up on that just by reading through. Yeah. The wow, fantastic, <laughs> Cheryl. What what do you see uh, that you get out of being the the coach, and and what do you see these kids are getting? Besides sometimes headaches, <laughs> but I absolutely love doing it. Um, just watching this group grow over the four years and learn, like I said, they are, if they want, some of them actually do want to become lawyers. Really? Okay. Yes. And I just think it really helps prepare them a lot. They have the critical yeah. thinking skills, but I just, every year before a tournament, I stress out, like I think Mr. Wendling indicated, <laughs> but every year they just blow me away. They're just fabulous. So I just get the sheer joy of watching them. Great. Any any requirements that the students need to meet other than the desire to participate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and that <laughs> has to be pretty strong, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, when they came on board, they were the first time I had freshmen because I don't teach any freshmen. I just have sophomore through seniors. Gotcha, okay. So I thought, who are these crazy kids that, number one, yeah. don't even know me yeah. and don't know anything about mock trial? But obviously, it worked out very well. Now, your team also won some awards this year. Yes, we won a lot of awards. Tell us about that. Um, my team B got fifth place in the county, which is a huge deal out of the 14 teams. And... We had individual awards. Samantha Shields got best direct. Best closing. Excuse me, best closing second and then second place for cross. Oh. And then Logan Clare got best portrayal of a witness. And then we had um, a fill in at the last minute. We ha I recruited a student from KPAC and he won his okay. portrayal of a best witness yeah. too, Wonderful. Dan Morrissey. Good. And, and Steve's been winner of best witness before also. Yeah. In a previous yes, year. Yes, when he oh, was okay. a fresh, wasn't it when you were a freshman? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Wow. Great. Now, are you going to be able to go on to the uh, Pontiac tournament? Yes, we will participate March 12th in Pontiac, and then they take the top seven teams from there to go to state. So, okay. Mike, not to put you on the spot, but as we wrap up the program, any advice for the students going on and, and any advice for uh, other schools and students who may think about getting into mock trial next year? Um, just be prepared. I mean, there's it's a huge time commitment, and these students put a lot of time and effort into this, and they're very excited about it. And I, I think it really helps in Memphis, too, that it has been mentioned that Memphis as a school has gone a long way to support this program. And they um, give these guys varsity letters if they participate, which is something I'm not sure that every school district We were the first school does. to do that, yeah. actually. And, so. um, and they, they take this as seriously as any other academic or athletic sport that Memphis um, participates in, and I think that's important. I think they were part of the pep rally on Friday. Yes, they were. Um, and, and the entire student body supports this program, and I think that's shown by the incredible results that they produced. Great. Samantha and Steve, just one last question. I'm going to ask you both the same question. We'll start with you, Samantha. If a student came up to you in the hall and said, why should I join Mock Trial, what would you tell them? Oh, well, that's a big question. I would, I would definitely recommend it because I loved it. And you learn a lot, and you can take a smaller role, like a witness, just to get started. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you can try a lo lawyer role. There's always room to improve. And there's two tournaments. You learn a lot from the first one, St. Clair, and then you get to go into another one and improve more. So I would recommend at least trying it, because you're going to get something out of it. I think it's a great experience. Steven? Uh, I say definitely. You know, when I first came here as a freshman, I didn't know, you know anything about the law. And you come in, and you just learn so much. It's not so much it's the experience that you get out of it and the things you learn i think that's the best part about it yeah, great well thanks for all of you coming in uh, and sharing your experience with mock trial and we wish you all the best when you go to pontiac thank you thank very you much. thank you for joining us for this edition of dateline schools